Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn the basics of API rate limiting in AppGyver, stay tuned. I'm going to be covering just that in this video. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with my channel, I have a ton of different resources and videos about various topics, one of which is AppGyver, which is a codeless application development platform, which is completely free for those making 10 million or less in revenue. You can check out their pricing page for the details just to verify all of that, but I'm pretty sure those really are the basics to the platform. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for a new content. So jumping straight into the AppGyver platform, this is the Coffee Canine app. It's an MVP or minimum viable product that I made in a separate video. If you're interested in that, check out the channel. But what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this article on Xano.com, and I will be pasting this article in the description as well. Now, I'm not familiar or affiliated with Xano or um, the person who made this article or anything like that, but it is a really good resource. So basically, the benefit of API rate limiting is going to be minimizing the amount of activity or uh, what we'll call just say hits to your backend database. So a lot of these databases will offer a certain amount of writes or reads for a given plan. So if we're using Firebase, for example, they have a free plan and the more usage, typically that means the more that you're going to end up paying. So it's like a scalable model. So in this case, if we're going over to this Xano page, you'll see there is a time to wait default period. So it's 5,000 milliseconds. So basically what we're doing is decreasing the frequency that we're reading to Firebase in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this article here. So we're going to set up our data variable, which is already set up. So we're just going to make some edits. So we are on this page here, which is just where do you get your coffee? It's at a sample forum post, and then everything's visible down here. So we are going to slide the variable slider over and we will go to data variables and you'll see this is the variable that we're effectively going to be looking to change. So if we click on cafes, you'll see the information collection of data records. Um, so you basically see all the specifics there. Now you can see how it's set up in the actual data tab, but that's not needed for now. So you'll see in the Xano article, it says go to the logic. So we'll go to the show logic option. And then as you scroll down, you'll see we're going to select the unit delay. So there's a utility. And then you'll see that we have a couple of options that we need to pay close attention to. So we're opening the logic view for the data variable on the unit delay component. And then we're going to change the, the time to wait default. Now, <clears throat> they recommend you do this for every variable you have connected to a Xano API, although this could be the case for our Firebase setup as well. So you'll see here for the page setup on the logic view for the data variable and the page view, remove the event page mounted setting, and then instead connect to the event page focused setting. So we'll follow that, and then it says do this for the page view and variable. It's recommended you do this for every page, but that is, n that is not the startup page for your app. So basically, we can walk through the basics here. So we see we have the page mounted and page focused. And in the Xano article, they're basically telling us page mounted is the default, recommended to change this to page focused. So basically what we would be doing here is we would just be deleting this line and dragging this over to page focused. And then we would click on the utility delay and you'll see time to wait 5,000. So basically we would just figure out what exactly do we need to have here. They say remove this all together, but basically my understanding is the time to wait you'll see here typically is going to be the time to wait is an integer. Negative values result in a zero delay and then your default value is 5,000. So basically, this is just going to allow us to limit the hits, so to speak. So again, you can set this to whatever value makes the most sense, but you'll see by default, variable setup in AppGyver will call the associated API every 5,000 milliseconds, which is not often. So if users are waiting on this page, for extended periods of time, it's constantly hitting that API. So you could increase this drastically if you wanted to reduce the amount of hits to the API or just remove it entirely. But bearing in mind, if you're expecting values on the page to be changing 
you may want it to update at least somewhat regularly. So you need to figure out what number works best for you, and then you can go ahead and make that change. So again, all we did was we went to the data variables by clicking on the variable slider, went to the data variables, clicked on the logic down here, removed the get record collection to connect to page focused instead of page mounted, and then we clicked on delay and changed the time to wait setting. Now I'm going to change mine back just because I'm going to keep everything as it is. I don't really plan to rate limit or anything here, but the main reason this is going to be valuable for you is people that are on your application regularly that are constantly hitting that API could end up getting pretty expensive for even a small number of users. Now you'll also notice in the Xano article that it talks about your page layout. So your page itself has logic as well. So if you go on any page and you click on the page layout, and then you click on show logic, you'll see down here we have page mounted and page focused again. So in the article, if you see where it talks about doing this for every page, you can do that for the page view and variable. So you have the option to do that in the page view here if you have any setups or anything set up. But this is also a really cool way to have things happen right when your page is loaded. For example, you could set it up to where when your page is mounted or focused to do certain things. But again, you can do that, that API rate limiting here as well. So I hope this was a helpful resource for you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.